So this video is about adding a GPS magnetometer unit to my B-Rotor F3 flight controller. I have two mini GPS's here. This is a Series 7 U-Blox from Banggood and it's the TN version. And then over here from Ready to Fly Quads I have the mini M8N version with Glenos support. So they're a little different in the fact that this one over here from Banggood has a magnetometer and has six wires and this one over here does not have a magnetometer but it does have uh, Glenis satellites so it, they've got different features both have their advantages I prefer the one with uh, Glenos satellites because it picks up satellites quickly and if you unplug it and plug it back in it remembers the satellites which is really handy and cuts down on your wait time uh, so I'm actually probably going to be using this one on my plane and uh, but this one over here is the one I'm going to show in the video because it has all six wires and I want to show people how to hook up the magnetometer and the GPS uh, this one's simpler because all it has is the GPS lines so this one just has the voltage and ground and then the uh, RX and TX that go to the GPS port. This one, in addition to that, it has the SCL and SDA lines which are for the magnetometer. So I'll show installing this one, but this one installs the same way and works just the same except it does not have the magnetometer. Uh, and there's two less wires to install too. So let's get into that. I'm going to be using this one and I'll mention this one as we go along. As you can see I put an arrow on the GPS so you can tell which way it's supposed to be orientated in the aircraft. The connection on the B-Rotor for the GPS is actually a small connector right here underneath the board and it's a Pico Blade Molex connector. So I had to match that. Unfortunately the B-Rotor did not come with a 10 pin connector that I need to plug into here. So I had to order some connectors from Mauser Electronics. You can also get these uh, 10 position Pico Blade connectors from DigiKey as well. So Mauser Electronics or DigiKey are two places you can order these and they're Pico Blade 10 position 1.25 millimeter pitch connectors. So there they are right there. You can see them really closely. So then what I did is I borrowed some wires from my B-Rotor kit and other flight controllers I had and uh, put the wires with their appropriate colors into the connector right there, like that. Actually it plugs into the board like this direction. To move the wires around you can just take a, a needle and pry up these tabs and then slip the wire out. Then you can just slip the new wire back in. Now I made a better wiring diagram that I'll post a link to underneath the video. But this shows all of the wires and, and they're color coded so you can see where they go. And uh, the TN GPS is actually labeled with the pin numbers, I mean uh, pin designations right here. And then I've also got a diagram which will be more professional on the one I post. But I've got a diagram here of the one from Ready to Fly Quads with Glenos and the wiring for that. And the trick here is that the RX goes to the TX and the TX goes to the RX pins on the B-Rotor. Whereas when you get to the SCL and the SDA on this one, the SDA actually goes to the SDA and the SCL goes to the SCL, so they're not reversed. Now here's the GPS plugged into the SF connector on the bottom of the board and you can see how I've got the wire colors there for the GPS. There's uh, two spaces between these and two spaces at the end not used. Now here's the wiring for the ready to fly quads uh, GPS with uh, Glenos and you can see that there's two wires missing right here because that's where the magnetometer wires would normally go. Now I've heard you can get a magnetometer for about three dollars on Banggood if you want to add a magnetometer to this. And then you'd have to tap in right here to these two holes next to the black and also add the ground and the voltage. So here's the cable I made right here. 
and you can see where I soldered the wires together. I tried to keep the color similar, but the green is going to a gray wire. The others are the same color. And this is how it should look after you get it all configured. But we have to configure the uh, flight controller with clean flight. I'll show you how to do that. And we have to configure the OSD to show the satellites. And of course the OSD is part of the B rotor. So let's configure the B rotor OSD first and that's a Mini Wii OSD. And in order to do this, this is very important. Guys, you need one of these. This is an FTDI board. An FTDI to USB adapter. And it plugs on right here like this onto the FTDI cable from your B rotor. Now go ahead and plug the USB cord into the FTDI adapter like that and plug the other end into your computer. So now launch the Mini Wii OSD configuration tool and I'm using R1.5 to match the version that's on the B rotor. So the B rotor comes with 1.5 but I do recommend that you go ahead and refresh 1.5 from GitHub. In other words, re-upload the firmware to your B rotor OSD with 1.5 because there's problems with the one that comes from the factory. I just wanted to say that. And you can see how to do that in another one of my videos. I'll try to put a link under this one for that. Okay, so once you get your configuration tool up, click on the COM port right here and it'll load up. You'll see waiting. You'll see it loading up. Okay, here's all your stuff and I'll just show you what I put in for the GPS only. I won't show you the other stuff, but you can look at it if you want to and, and do configure yours this way. But what I did was under GPS settings, I just went ahead and turned each one of these on. These top three. I didn't change the map mode. I just left that on one. And I didn't use the compass at all because I don't plan on using the compass whatsoever. I'm just going to have the GPS so that I have the home arrow, the altitude, GPS altitude, and maybe the coordinates. And then you have your number of satellites right here. So that's mainly what I wanted, and uh, so I only ticked these top three. So that's all you got to do. And then just go down here and write it with the write button. And you'll see it counting up as it writes, and then you're done. And if you want to change anything else, you can do that while you're in here. I already have everything set up the way I want it, so I'm not going to change it. Now, to configure Clean Flight, which is up next, we don't use this uh, mini USB cable. Instead, we have to switch to a micro USB cable. And it doesn't go into the FTDI connector anymore. It goes into the USB port right there on the B rotor. So now that uh, the GPS is installed right here, I've found that Clean Flight will no longer connect unless you have a battery connected. In other words, if you disconnect the USB cable, if only the USB cable is plugged into the computer, it will not connect when you hit the connect button on Clean Flight. So what you have to do is you connect the battery first, like this, and then come over and plug the USB into the computer. And remember, we're not using the FTDI uh, connector anymore. We're not using this. It's straight into the B rotor. It's only for the OSD configuration that you use the FTDI to USB adapter. So battery connected first, then plug in, and then you can connect. Like that. And now we're connected. So let's get into configuring it. So now that we're connected, the first thing we need to do to enable the GPS is go to ports. Okay, so once you're in ports, go ahead and turn on UART2 right here for the GPS. So that's UART2. Don't change UART1, whatever you do. So just change this one, turn that on, and then you can change the speed here to 11, 5, 200, and then save the changes. So that's all there is to that. 
and then go to configuration and down here and I've already done it I'll just show it to you again turn the GPS on right here and then choose U blocks that's what I'm using as a U blocks I'll leave this on auto detect and you can put whatever your declination is right here for your compass you can get that off of uh, the internet on what's my declination and after that save it and that's pretty much all you need to do and if it's working once it's saved you'll see up here that the GPS is now lit up and so is the magnetometer right here so those two will come on and you'll be able to tell that it's working but with the GPS from ready to fly quads that doesn't have a magnetometer but GLONASS satellites you won't see the magnetometer lit up right here you will see the GPS light note that if you do have a magnetometer and this button is lit up right here you need to go back to the setup screen and do the magnetometer calibration by clicking this button and then you have 30 seconds to move the aircraft around 360 degrees in all of the axes so just keep that in mind now let's take a look at our GPS tab and we can see what satellites we're picking up and uh, GLONASS and GPS are working together here to bring up quite a few satellites we have a 3D fix and it's true and like I said this is in the in the basement so this is doing really great so to finish up let's just go ahead and disconnect the USB cable and then disconnect the battery so just remember if you don't plug the battery in first and then the USB cable you might have trouble I've tried it different ways and sometimes it doesn't work right if I plug the USB cable in first and then the battery but once the GPS is connected down here it needs power and the only way it can get power is from the battery and if the battery isn't plugged in then the system just freezes and you can't get it to work right and clean flight won't connect so that's the most important thing to remember probably other than those settings I showed you thanks for watching and I hope this helps so here's what it looks like when we're flying around with all the bells and whistles working and you can see at the top of the screen on the left we have the number of satellites which is 13 and 12 and then to the right of that in the right hand corner we have the home arrow pointing back towards home and uh, then we have the, the GPS uh, distance and altitude right there along with it. So it's all working. Take your